Very. Um, in this video, we're gonna start a new topic, which is uh, phase equilibrium and uh, mass transfer. And actually, it's one important topic, and it's uh, really um, important that every chemical engineer knows uh, about this uh, kind of stuff. So uh, actually, um, um, the the uh, uh, video today would uh, be an introduction uh, to the uh, next videos and actually um, it's it's pretty uh, important to uh, make sure that you know these concepts well and uh, these are the basics on which we are gonna do all the uh, next uh, videos so we'll start with the uh, binary system phase diagrams to revise them quickly and then um, talk about the um, most famous rule uh, laws that rule the equilibrium which are Dalton's law and Raoult's law and we will talk about them uh, in more details and then the Antoine equation that we use to calculate the vapor pressure of components um, and then to see how we use these three uh, equations the above three equations to do the phase equilibrium and uh, uh, convert this into useful equations in the phase equilibrium and then to see how we do the bubble and dew point calculations uh, in this video we're not uh, gonna do anything with excels uh, we're gonna do excel next uh, video inshallah. so um, let's get started so for the binary phys uh, system phase diagrams actually uh, this is how it looks like uh, for the ideal systems of course and actually the x-axis uh, the x-axis is the composition uh, either x or y x for uh, liquids and y is for vapor and the y axis is the temperature um, and then you have um, two components uh, A and B one X is 100% B and 0% A and the other uh, end is 100% A and 0% B and as you go from left to right the percent A increases and percent B decreases and vice versa and then um, it's called the temperature composition diagram and these two curves uh, split the uh, diagram into three um, uh, phases or three regions this is a liquid region in the bottom and then the vapor region in the top and then you have uh, in this uh, between these two lines it's called the wet region or liquid and vapor region where you have two uh, two phases in equilibrium and um, the top curve is called vaporous curve and the bottom is called the liquid curve because the top one is the locus of the um, uh, at which the, the components start to uh, vaporize so it's called the vaporous curve and the one uh, uh, on the bottom is called the liquid curve because it's the one at which the components cool and start to form liquids that's why you call it a liquid curve and um, if you choose any composition and uh, it, it, it will cut as you see it will cut the two curves in two points uh, it's called the dew point and the bubble point so when it cuts the vaporous curve it's called dew point and then when it cuts the liquid curve it's, it's, it's called the a bubble point and actually the vaporous curve and the liquid curve are just the locus of the dew point and uh, bubble points and if you have a lot of dew point uh, dew, uh, dew points uh, like at, uh, temperatures at different compositions and a lot of bubble points you can connect them and draw these two lines so actually it's just the locus of the dew point and this is the locus of the bubble point and it's pretty important to know how to calculate these two guys because um, it's the uh, uh, main or the most important thing is to know uh, where the wet region lies because it's the region at which the um, uh, phase separation happens spontaneously so you need to know where it is so you can do your separation in between and actually this is the main um, or the basic idea of uh, many uh, separation uh, processes like the flashing and distillation where you move your component to lie somewhere in between these two curves in the wet region and then it splits uh, into two uh, uh, liquid and or two phases liquid and vapor and you will see this in in few uh, slides so um, let's say if we have a binary system and you have two components the a is the more volatile component and b is the less volatile it means that more volatile it evaporates quickly so it has high boiling point and has a uh, low uh, vapor uh, i mean high uh, high boiling low boiling point and high vapor pressure uh, as it as it becomes more volatile it, it, it needs to reach low temperature to evaporate and uh, so it has high vapor pressure and uh, why it's called the mole fraction we said that, that before y is mole fraction of component i and xi is the mole fraction of component i uh, in liquid and y is in vapor 
um, the governing equations that we need to keep in mind uh, are two main equations called Dalton's law and the other is called uh, Raoult's law. For Dalton's law, it's important to know the difference between these two uh, uh, equations. Got they are kind of uh, similar. They look like each other, and they work for two different systems. And you need to keep that in mind. So um, the Dalton's law applies for gas phase only. No liquid is included in this in this law. And in this law, you say that the partial pressure of component I. Let's say you have a component I. It's uh, equals to the mole fraction. Uh, of this component multiplied by the total pressure so uh, let's say you have this balloon it, it has oxygen and nitrogen then the partial pressure of oxygen is the mole fraction of oxygen in the vapor phase multiplied by the total pressure and the same for nitrogen be the mole fraction of nitrogen multiplied by the vapor phase so it's just a relation between the partial pressure and the total pressure no vapor pressure no liquid is included in this equation the second one's called Raoult's law. Raoult's law is important, uh, or it's used for the case of liquid mixture, where you calculate the vapor pressure at the interface of the liquid or between the liquid and vapor phases. So let's say um, uh, you have this benzene and toluene. The, the the law says that the partial pressure um, of component I equals to the mole fraction in liquid phase. It's not the vapor phase like like before. It's a liquid phase multiplied by the vapor pressure. Okay, so let's say you have this benzene and toluene uh, mixture. Then you say that uh, if you zoom in on the interface, then at this interface, which is just really close to the surface of the liquid phase, you have the to the partial pressure of toluene equals to the mole fraction of toluene in the liquid multiplied by the vapor pressure, and the same for benzene. Um, so. Uh, Let's talk about the vapor pressure and how we calculate it. So the vapor pressure, as we, we said before, it's a physical property of a material. It depends on the uh, uh, temperature. I mean, the, it varies with temperature. And there are many equations that are used to calculate the vapor pressure, and some of them for ideal and some for non-ideal systems. There are a bunch of them. And then uh, one most common uh, or, or very famous equation is called the Antoine equation, where you say that the line of, uh, line of the vapor pressure of component I equals A minus B over C plus T, where a, B, and C are, com are, are constants for each component, and T is temperature in Kelvin, and then you calculate the vapor pressure uh, in millimeter mercury, I think. Um, so this is the, the or these are the equations that we use for our system of uh, liquid vapor equilibrium. And now we'll see how we use these equations to make uh, an equilibrium relation. So we know the relation uh, that uh, that relates the vapor pressure and the partial pressure and the other one for vapor pressure and total pressure. And actually, uh, what we are going to say that if you have a system in equilibrium, you have liquid and you have vapor, and these two uh, uh, these two phases are in equilibrium. So in this case, there is no mass transfer going between the gas and the liquid. And in this case, you can say that the partial pressure at the interface between the liquid and vapor equals to the partial pressure of each component in the gas phase. So you can say that the partial pressure of the gas phase is equal to the partial pressure at the liquid interface. So you can put Raoult's law and you can put the sorry Dalton's law and they are now equal to each other. And this this is only at the case of equilibrium, it's not a general case. And then you can say that the Y equals the vapor pressure over the total pressure multiplied by XA or what's called at the K a multiplied by x a and this is the general equation and it's the most used form of equilibrium relation for a liquid vapor system it's valid for ideal or non-ideal system binary or multi-component it doesn't matter but the only difference is that if it's a non-ideal system the k will not be vapor pressure over total pressure it will be like more complicated shape than we see now but it, it's it's called k it's the equilibrium constant and it will be always called k uh, it doesn't matter so uh, let's go back to the theory of distillation. As we said before, if you have your system in between these two curves, then it will split spontaneously into two uh, phases, liquid phase and gas phase, and both are in equilibrium. And this line is called the tie line. And this tie line is the, um, so it splits uh, into two phases, uh, uh, liquid and vapor phase. And this um, uh, this line is the cold tie line or equilibrium line. It, it, uh, it relates 
the x and y or the mole fraction in liquid and the vapor phase uh, at the same temperature so it's constant temperature line and uh, what happens is that your system uh, your system splits spontaneously into y and x and this y and x are in equilibrium with each other and this uh, and this is the i'm sorry this is the relation that relates them that we just mentioned before so um let's see how we calculate the bubble point and the dew point or how the calculations go so uh, before we see the calculations we need to understand why we call it bubble point and then we will know uh, how the calculations go so it's called bubble point because uh, if you have um, let's say this is a liquid uh, comp liquid um, uh, like beaker or something and then it's filled with liquid and the temperature increases gradually gradually till you touch this curve which is the a vaporous a liquid curve in this case you have a really really small bubble of liquid or gas starts to form and uh, then you stop at this temperature and in this case um, this bubble of gas would just uh, stay there it's in equilibrium with the whole liquid so they are in equilibrium and the composition of liquid didn't change because it's just a tiny bubble of gas so this is what we mean here you will increase the temperature till you lose till, till you touch this um, uh, curve and then this temperature is called bubble point and this gas that formed is in, in equilibrium with the liquid and the liquid is the same composition of the field that's why you draw the tie line this way um, and so when you do the um, uh, the calculation then you say that the x uh, is the x feed is the x of the liquid and then which is known and then you say that y is k multiplied by x feed so our goal now is calculate the, to calculate this bubble point this temperature um, and actually we remember before that k is vapor pressure over total pressure and the vapor pressure is a function of temperature as we just said few slides ago then in order to calculate the temperature you need to know the temperature to calculate the vapor pressure so it's kind of confusing and it's a long process to calculate so it, it requires some steps to calculate the bubble point uh, so first you need to assume a value and then to validate this assumption so how you are going to validate it you will do the calculations and calculate the, the, the mole fractions so if you calculate the assume a bubble point then you calculate can you can calculate the vapor pressure and then you can calculate the k and from the k you can calculate the y's and if your assumption is right is right then the summation of y would will be one otherwise then um, your assumption will be wrong and then you can assume another value of the t till you get the value that gives the sigma y equals one um, the dew point is kind of similar but in, 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 in this case you have a vapor uh, that you cool and you will cool it till it, it reaches this uh, point where a tiny drop of liquid starts to form that's why it's called dew point because you just form a little drop of liquid and once this drop forms then it's in equilibrium with the gas phase the gas phase composition didn't change because it's just a tiny drop and then you will do the same thing you will do draw, draw the tie line and the y would be the y of the feed and you will do the same steps but the only difference is that you know that the x feed equals to y before we started with x equal x feed but here we start with y so y would be y, uh, x feed and then you can do the same thing you can calculate the k from y uh, x from y i'm sorry and they then k is function of temperature so you assume a dew point you calculate the x and then you will uh, calculate the summation of x if it's one then the assumption is right if not then you will assume another value so um we will do these calculations in excel next time so Allah, but i i i i'm really recommend if you want to watch this on excel just to make sure that you understand everything here before you go ahead and watch the next video so i'll see you next time Allah. bye bye